Now, verse 16, he said, while he was yet speaking. Now, while he was speaking. Now, you, when Satan come at you, it's all in one time. He ain't waiting. He ain't, he ain't trying to wait. He ain't trying to know. I, I need to bust his bubble now. <laughs> he wanted all in one. <laughs> he wants you to lose your faith right now. He ain't got time for you to be losing your faith days. That, no, I want them to lose their faith now. Listen to what he says in 16. While he was yet speaking, while this guy was telling him everything what was happening, he said, there came another and said, the fire of God has fell upon heaven, fallen, fallen from heaven and had burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only escaped alone to tell thee. I'm the only person. Notice that Satan only sent one person to tell Job. <laughs> Somebody had to tell Job. He couldn't kill everybody. Now listen to 17. While he was yet speaking. This is the third thing that happened. That all this stuff came to him in one day. There came also another and said the Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camel and have cried and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. I'm the only person living to tell you. Now listen to the next verse. This is the fourth thing. Now while he was yet speaking, now while this one was telling him, so you have three people telling him this stuff at the same time, what happened? All of this came at Job at one time. Could you imagine that? And it happened first where? In the spirit. But God know Job's heart. Satan don't know your heart. Satan don't know how much faith you got. He don't know what's in here. God do. Y'all understand that? Listen to what he said. There came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in thy, their elder brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young man, and they are his children, dead. He said, and I alone am escaped only to tell thee. All of this stuff happened at one time to Job. One time it happened to Job. Why? It's spiritual war. God gave Satan permission. He gave him permission to do it. But he said, don't touch Job. That was on the first temptation. On the second one, he could touch Job, but he couldn't kill him. And listen to what Job did. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell, a, and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And verse 22 sums it up. He said, in all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Oh, man. That says it all right there. That's a man of faith. That's a man that totally trusts God no matter what happened in his life. But it started with, it's a spiritual war. Stuff happened for a reason. Stuff just don't happen. It ain't by accident that kids that disrespect their parents, cuss out their parents, cuss out their grandparents, get killed early. It ain't no accident. That's the first commandment with a promise. Honor thy mother and thy father that your days will be long on the earth. So if you go around disrespecting, cussing out your mama, cussing out your daddy, cussing out your grandparents, I can do what I want to do, don't want to listen to what they say, and then they die early. It ain't no accident. We living in the fleshly realm thinking, well, they died in a motorcycle accident or car accident or whatever. But you don't know the hell they put their parents through. 
That's the first commandment with a promise. Your days will be cut short. Ain't, no, ain't nothing your mama can do about that. Ain't nothing your daddy can do about that. Well, you that disrespectful and that wicked towards your parents, something got to happen. Something going to happen. Y'all understand that? Why? Because it's going to manifest itself in the spirit, just like Sodom and Gomorrah. God, what did God say? He said, I will go down now to see the cry of it, if it's like, I, like the report said it was. There was a report that went up to God, said Sodom and Gomorrah were wicked, grievously wicked. God said, I'm going to come down now and look at it. Y'all don't believe that? Let me read that in closing, then we can get out of here. Because y'all look like y'all sharp, don't believe it. So we're going to read that, and then we're going to get out of here. And uh, the book of Genesis, I think it's 18. Yep, 18. Genesis 18. And we're going to start about verse 20. And this is what it says. Now listen to it. He said, and the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is coming to me. And if not, I will know. So there was a cry went up to God. That means the angels reported back how wicked that city was. So God said, I got to go down and see this. The where it started at. It started where? In the spirit. It's a spiritual war. And we fight in the spiritual war with fleshly armor. Fleshly uh, equipment. But our equipment is not carnal. You want to fight spiritual battles, you got to fight it on your knees. You got to fight it with fasting. You got to fight it with prayer. You got to back away from the table for a couple hours or something, two hours, three hours, it don't matter how long you fast, as long as you fast and pray and as and seek God. But it starts in the spirit. Once you realize something starts in the spirit, then you, you know when people talk about you and say stuff about you, you're like, hmm, something ain't right about that person. Why? It starts in the spirit. Satan probably sent him at you, yeah, destroy that about him, I don't care about that. Or say that about him, I don't care about that. It starts in the spirit. And once you recognize it, that's when you attack it by prayer and fasting. It's just, I mean, it's prayer. Daniel attacks prayer and fasting. When you're seeking God for something, pray and fast. Just like casting out a spirit. Jesus said, this kind only come out by prayer and fasting. That's how we must attack the spirit world. Because it's going to start there before it manifests on the earth. That's why Jesus said those great words. Whatever you bind in heaven shall be, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Why? Because that's where it starts at. You want to bind up the spiritual realm? Bind it up in heaven. Then it won't be manifested in the flesh. Y'all understand? So if you don't repent, it's coming. But see, when you repent and seek God, that stuff don't happen like it does. It's all about seeking God and repenting to God. That's what he told Solomon. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then he'll do what? <laughs> he'll heal the land. But if you don't heal the land, guess what's going to happen? Stuff, what, what happening now? If you, the nation, don't repent, the stuff going to continue to happen. It's just that simple. But as soon as the, the hierarchy repent, the governors and councilmen and all that stuff repent and get out of all that crookedness that they're doing, it ain't going to get no better. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. Why? Because you don't want to repent. They got you thinking global warming is real. <laughs> so if they got you thinking all that stuff, you ain't going to repent for the stuff that you do wrong because you thinking, well, it's it happening, so it must be true. But there's a reason stuff happens. It manifests in the spirit and come down to the flesh. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for another day you've given us.
Father, we know who you are, Lord, and we just thank you for it, Father. Lord, we thank you for strength. We thank you for, for mercy and grace.